Shalom, shalom. First talk of our praise, honor, and glory unto Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shai, Bashem, Makar Kadash, the bondage to the apostles and the elders of GMS. Salutes and honors to the elect, all the brothers across the four corners who are enduring in truth and sincerity, the women and children, and the confusion of faith who follow. So, um, just doing some reading and, uh, Came across a scripture that sparked this lesson. Lord's will is going to be edifying. So, uh, with that being said, we're going to jump right into it. This is Second Ezra chapter six, and verse thirty-four. It says, "And hasten not with the times that are past to think vain things, that thou mayest not hasten from the latter times." Now, I got a alternate version of this and this is from uh let me see i believe it's the nsv the new revised standard version all right so uh i want to read this and get a little clarity it says do not be quick to think vain thoughts you know thoughts that really don't have no merit it's not it's of no value so it's concerning the former the former times then you will not act hastily in the last times. So, you know, what, what I'm getting from this and uh, what I want to you know, portray to you is, uh, you know, we all have a history, we all have a past, and what's done has been done. All right. We can't go back and mend or change our past change the things that have happened, the things that have occurred in our life, the mistakes that we've made. Everything that we've done in our past has brought us to this point. So we need to really lock in and pay attention to the future, the present and the future, the right now and the here to come. Because right now, the mercy doors are still open. But in a short period of time here, hey, the Lord is going to let all hell break loose in this place. So we don't need to worry about the past, worry about, you know, when we were in the world, the things that we did, the access of right that we used to run to. How much we prospered. Whatever, you know, we all had, like I said, lives in the world. But we need to keep our, our head in the game. And matter of fact, uh, there's a, a saying called game time. All right. So what does it mean to be uh, in game time? It says it's time, to, it's time to go do what has to be done. It's time to go to work. All right. So right now it's game time. All right, it's uh, fourth quarter, two minutes. All right, and we have to perform. The Most High has a job to be done. It's time to go to work. All right, so um, I want to get an example. All right, this is uh, Genesis chapter 19. I'm going to start at uh, verse 17. It says, and it came to pass. When they had brought them forth. Now, this is speaking about Lot, his family, when they were, you know, in the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah, and the angel is basically telling them to, to you know, to get out the city because it's going to be destroyed. It's like it just to set the scene for you. All right, verse seventeen it says, and it came to pass when they had brought them forth abroad uh, that he said. Escape for thy life. Okay, he's told them to escape for your life. This is this escape is basically going to save you. And he gave them a key instruction. It says, look not behind thee, neither stay thou in all the plain. Escape to the mountain, lest thou be consumed. All right, so he told them to, you know, basically run for your life. And not to look behind. All right, and that's what we have to do right now. We are 
spiritually running for our lives. Our life is on the line. Salvation is on the line. Because America will be destroyed. Jacob's trouble will consume America. Okay, and if you're not in the right frame of mind, or if it ain't game time in your mind, you're not going to make it in these times. <laughs> I'm not going to make it in these times if I don't have my mind right. But uh, there's a, a key point, like I said, he said to, to not look behind. All right, and the scripture said not to look behind in Second Ezra. What does it mean to, to look behind? Well, let's, let's read. Okay. It says, uh, And Lot said unto them, Oh, not so, my Lord. <laughs> behold, now, uh, behold now, thy servant hath found grace in thy sight, and thou hast magnified thy mercy, which thou hast showed unto me in saving my life. So he was like, oh, you know, the water, the water, thank you, thank you. Hey, I'm. <laughs> you said to get up out of here, I'm going to get up out of here. You said don't look behind, I'm going to just keep, <laughs> keep looking forward. He was happy. He was grateful for the opportunity to have his life spared. And we need to be happy, we need to be grateful to have the opportunity to have our life spared and to obtain salvation. It says, I cannot escape to the mountain, lest some evil take me and I die. But hold now, the city is near to flee unto, and it is a little one. Oh, let me escape thither. Is is it not a little one? Uh, and my soul shall live? And he said unto him, see I, have, see, I have accepted thee concerning this thing also, that I will not overthrow the city for uh, for the witch thou hast spoken. So he's like, man, I'm not going to make it to the mountain. Can I get to this little city over here? It's just a little city. You know, all right, all right, I'm not going to destroy it. All right, he says, hasty, escape thither. So like, hurry up and, and go. For I cannot do anything till thou has come thither. Uh, therefore, the name of the city was called Zor. So he said, look, I can't do nothing until you out of here. All right, he was set for salvation. So, you know, it, it couldn't start until, you know, he had cleared the, the way out. All right. But here's the kicker. Uh, you know, most brothers should know this story. But uh, it says, uh, verse 23, the sun was risen upon the earth when Lot entered into Zor. Then the Lord rained upon Sodom and upon Gomorrah, brimstone and fire from the Lord out of heaven. All right, and that's the same judgment that America is going to get, okay? These missiles are going to rain down. And right as Lot got out, okay, and got into the city of Zor, that's when these missiles start, or socket, this hellfire and brimstone started to rain down on Sodom and Gomorrah. Same as when we get out of this place, okay? We're, he's going to bring us through the fire, the elect will see. Slocky, I'm sorry. The elect will see this place go down, this place burn. The elect will be beamed up into the chariots right before the destruction. Same as Lot. Put yourself in Lot's shoes. The scripture says that the earth shall pass away with a great noise. Right? And the elements shall melt with fervent heat. You think that that didn't have a great noise? And he was already told that these people were going to be destroyed? Lot heard all of that. Boom, 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 boom. He knew what was going on. Let's keep reading. Verse 25, it says, And he overthrew those cities and all the plain and all the inhabitants of the city, and that which grew and that which grew upon the ground, 
But his wife looked back from behind him, and she became a pillar of salt. So white, uh, so Lot's life, suck it, Lot's wife decided she wanted to look back after the angel told her not to. Why did she look back? Why did the scripture tell them not to look back? Why did Second Ezra tell you not to look back? Why did wife Lot or why did Lot's wife look back? Because she was invested. She was invested in her home. In her old life, you know, her other kids that that were destroyed, that that didn't flee the city. She wanted. She was still invested in her spirit. That's why she looked back. Because in her mind, her home, everything she knew. Well, I mean, they, they weren't there forever. But she still had a home there. She's still, you know, the woman is the homemaker. When they left, they they had to flee in a hurry. It wasn't like she got to, to pack a bag. All her possessions were in that city that just got obliterated. She had, like I said, she had an investment in that world of Sodom and Gomorrah. And that's why we are to look forward and not look back. Because we don't have no investments in this world. We shouldn't have any investments in this world. Yeah, we we're, we live in the world, but we're not of the world. We got to go to work. We got to send our kids to school and pick them up. Go to the dentist and, you know, go, go to work. We got to play the game. Run the rat race. Whatever you want to call it. All right, but we understand that we are in the matrix. We we know when we understand what we're dealing with. So no, we can't look back. We don't have time to look back. We can't afford to look back. That old man is dead, and if you ain't killed that old man, then hey, <laughs> right now you 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 got a conflict going on within yourself. We get this uh, scripture right here. This is uh, Ecclesiastes 39 and 1. It says, But he that giveth his mind to the law of the Most High and is occupied in the meditation thereof, fuck it, and is occupied in the meditation thereof, will seek out the wisdom of all the ancient and be occupied in prophecies. We ain't got time to look back. All right, because if you're giving your mind to the Most High, your time, your meditation, right, your efforts, if you're seeking out wisdom, all right, you're gonna be occupied in these prophecies. Look at everything that's going on with with, with Russia and the Ukraine. How that's heated right back up. How now Russia is dropping bombs. <laughs> like no other. They calling up their, their full army. This third war's war is creeping closer and closer and closer. This so-called Great Reset is creeping closer and closer and closer. All right. And definitely... You know, the sea hip is creeping closer and closer and closer. So what? As the scripture says, what man are you to be in all holy conversation and godliness? Knowing this, right? Hey, you got to strap up your boots. We ain't got time to look back. What's done has been done. We are moving forward, moving on. All right, marching towards salvation, putting your best foot forward. 
All right, this is a uh, Acts chapter three. I'm going to start at um, verse 19. It says, "Repent ye therefore and be converted, that your sins may be blotted out." Right? You got to repent. All right, you you should have already. You know, when you come to this thing, we repent. But you know, nobody's perfect. You know, we sin. But you got to repent and be converted, converted in your mind that you got your mind on the meditation of Yahweh Bashim Yahushai and that your sins may be blotted out. Are you you ain't worried about none of that, man. You look you looking forward because you're trying to get those sins blotted out. You're not gonna get those sins blotted out by dwelling on them. Oh man, I done, done did it again. I'm gonna fuck up. You 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 you're cussing yourself out, you you speaking all these these apparitions in your mind. I'm just giving a scenario. You you know you basically you you down on yourself. You can't you can't do that. You you gotta get back on the horse. Righteous man fall seven times, but he get back up. And like it says, we're trying to get these sins blotted out. So you're going to have to put action forth to get that, that clean slate. It says, when the times of refreshing shall come uh, from the presence of the Lord, and he shall send Yahweh Shai HaMashiach, which was before preached unto you. Right? So, you know, we've been reading about this great man who laid down his life for us. Right? Verse 21, it says, whom the heaven must receive until the time into the times of restitution of all things. So Yahweh Shai is in the heavens right now, but he's going to appear, okay, at the restitution of all things, right? Which the Most High has spoken by the mouth of all of his holy prophets since the world began. Now let's get this focus on this restitution of all things. So we're going to get this word restitution. All right, it's a. Uh, bear with me. Here we go. Strong's G605. All right. And um, let me see. It just says uh, restoration, a truth of theocracy, uh, of, a perfect, of a perfect state before the fall. All right. Us as Israel, we were in that perfect state. And then we fell. But we are still the apple of the Lord's eye. We are still his chosen people. Now, I want to go just a little bit further into this and go into the the, the root word, right? Which is strong uh, G600. And it says, to restore to his former state, to be in his former state, right? And we know what the scripture says that we are, uh, that there are servants upon horses and kings, you know, walking the earth. So guess what? We're going to go back into that kingly state. That's what we have coming in the future. That's why we can't look behind because we're too busy trying to obtain this crown. That's the focus. That's the goal. Salvation. We can't change the past. But, you know, apparatus that we are numbered with the saints. All right. And we can put our best foot forward in this life, in this time, in these days, to try to lock in that salvation. All right. So uh, with that being said, Lord's will, this was edifying. And I want to give all praise, honor, and glory unto Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rakar Kadash, the honors to, to the apostles and the elders of GMS, salutes and honors to the elect, all the brothers across the four corners who are enduring in truth and sincerity, the women, the children, and the confusion of faith who follow. Shalom.